rain probably you can uh, mute your microphone yeah um do you want to do any intro before uh rain uh, uh yeah sure okay most people don't know who i am i'm not a big person but <laughs> okay go ahead okay uh let me just open my script i'm sorry let me open my script so, uh, Bhante Dr. Chandima is a senior advisor to Patisota. Patisota is a virtual Dharma organization that helps beginners and expert students in learning the Dharma in a variety of ways. The website link is patisota.blogspot.com. Many people are interested in Dharma Pariyasin uh, Sana, Patisota's most acclaimed interview series, which Bhante conducts on a regular basis. Bhante also does Sutta discussions with Tiratana Buddhist Society, uh, the Klang branch, Tiratana Vihara every Friday night. In 2015, Bhante Dr. Chandima earned a PhD in Buddhist Studies from the University of Sri Jayawarde Nepura in Sri Lanka. From 2012-2016, he served as Theravada Buddhist Chaplain at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver in Canada, and in 2016 was a research fellow at the Centre for Studies in Religion and Society of the University of Victoria, British Columbia. So uh, we welcome Bhante Dr. Chandima to talk about how Buddhism benefits mental health. Thank you, Rain. And uh, I can see uh, one participant car over here. I guess others uh, should be watching all on YouTube, probably on Facebook. So, um, dear Dhamma friends, uh, I'm happy uh, to give a talk uh, to all of you, uh, in particular on uh, the Vesak uh, uh, Day. As you can know that uh, Vesak full moon poe day uh, changes uh, here and there because of the lunar uh, you know, movements uh, according to the calendar. But uh, it was uh, this kind of a day that uh, uh, helped uh, Prince uh, Siddhartha uh, to be born and then uh, the ascetic uh, Siddhartha to uh, become the full Buddha and then uh, the Shakyamuni Buddha to pass away. So these three events always uh, fall on uh, a full moon for it. And I don't think that uh, it's a uh, new thing to all of you. So uh, I, uh, when I was asked uh, what kind of a topic I could talk to uh, the youth, I was then uh, thinking about uh, uh, a topic that can uh, benefit uh, many of you, uh, it is none other than uh, the mental health. So how Buddhism benefits mental health. Now, mental health is a very, uh, you know, uh, interesting and very uh, popular topic uh, uh, among many. Uh, now, uh, sometimes uh, back, uh, there was this notion came in uh, in the West that uh, uh, people who supposed to what you call uh, see a psychologist or psychotherapist, probably a psychiatric person, they were considering Buddhist meditation uh, as a low cost uh, alternative. Now, uh, that's uh, in a way, uh, you know, good for new people, but I think uh, you can't replace a psychologist or psychiatric uh, person or a, a psychotherapist. Uh, with just a meditation because uh, you should definitely have a, a proper diagnosis uh, uh, with a uh, with an expert i would i would say a professional but anyways the the idea that they uh, regardless of whether they want to look for a low cost of uh, alternative or not the idea of looking for buddhist teachings for their mental uh, problems or mental uh, well-being is a good uh, motive it's a, it's a good uh, move that's very interesting because uh, not even in the west but also in the east meditation is a very normal practice but i see in the east uh, like all of us uh, uh, have been raised to practice meditation at a serious point like whenever uh, we do serious meditation uh, or whenever we want to be serious meditators only we want to practice certain meditations but in the West, uh, anybody who wants to uh, recognize uh, them being as Buddhists, they say, oh, I'm, a, I'm a Buddhist. Okay, what's your practice? I meditate. 
<laughs> that's the only uh, way that they uh, define themselves they don't uh, do many things i'm not saying this is better than the other one so the, so the way how they have taken the buddhist uh, meditation and how the buddhist meditation has impacted uh, or maybe has been used uh, practiced by uh, eastern i would say the countries where the buddhism was uh, uh, you know originated uh, seem to be different so the thing here that we need to discuss is uh, can buddhism really help anyone who is having some issues problems with mental health now let's keep let's keep that in uh, in a kind of a corner of our discussion in the meantime let's let's look at this well being part now well being is the most important thing that we all need to have uh, in our daily life now this well being uh, is is mainly uh, well uh, mental and physical well being physical and mental now uh, it's the well being of our emotional psychological social uh, social well being that we need to understand by this broader perspective of well being now if if our emotions are not uh, working properly i would say if our emotions are giving us a hard time if uh, our psychological um, i would say uh, moods aspects whatever the things uh, with uh, with the mind uh, go hey why i would say uh, do not work uh, in the way that we would like to be in and if we mess up with our social circles uh, even within our family we don't talk properly to our family members we don't have a good connection with our family members um, and and neighbors and others uh, colleagues so then that's a social problem with the well being so if the emotions and thoughts uh, plus uh, the social life getting messed up that definitely means that we have a problem with our mental health now uh, up to certain time even the who uh, world health organization also label and categorize in their description that uh, uh, you know health is the absence of physical problems physical uh, uh, sicknesses but then uh, this was long time ago but I, i think it was not actually defined at the time that they defined first they said that uh, health is both is the absence of both physical and mental illnesses now we understand mental and physical they both play the role of this well being so this is why this topic is such interesting and we have to look at how does buddhism teach us to uh, overcome any uh, issues with regard to our emotions uh, thoughts and our social life it's a very uh, uh, an important topic to talk today because today is the day the buddha Uh, i would say uh, ascetic siddhartha found out his freedom liberation everything in buddhism is psychological is mind based because even the transformation from an unenlightened being into enlightened being is a is a transformation of the mind now in the west uh, we say there is the mind but in buddhism we say there are minds if you, if you touch based abidamba you can see that there are a lot of minds minds with lobe minds with alobe dosa adosa moha amoha so the first thing that we have to understand is that all these issues if we if we take uh, emotional problems psychological problems and social problems they arise uh, in a mismanagement of our mind it's a mismanagement that is what uh, all these issues arise so then we need to manage our emotions uh, mind and but in particular thoughts in particular our social life so this is how we have to look at it because the way how we feel the way how we think and the way how we react respond or act upon those thoughts emotions is very important that's where this mental health lies now how can we understand the mind part now uh, probably uh, i can have a bit of a discussion with uh, our friend here <laughs> that's why he's here uh, so uh, 
and uh, I wanted to know whether I uh, pronounce your pronounce your name properly. Are you Ka? Bande. Bande, my Are name you... is Wei Ken. You can call me oh. Wei Ken. Bande. Wei Ken. Wei Ken. Yes, Wei Ken. Uh, or you can call me yeah, Ken. Can... It's easier for you. Well, I can say I can actually call you as Waken. So yes, we you, can work. Thank, yep. you, thank you for being here. Uh, what do you think about uh, you know uh, mental health in terms of uh, Buddhist practice in the first place? All right, uh, thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, thank you for the question, Bhante. Uh, good evening, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, for those who are watching, uh, good evening, Bhante. Good evening, uh, brother Rain. All right, um, I'm glad to be here uh, with all of you, and uh, happy Vesa Day uh, once again uh, to our fellow, to our fellow uh, Buddhist uh, devotees and Buddhist practitioners who are rejoicing in today's uh, meaningful event. I think Bante said it very well. Today is especially significant as we explore this topic of mental health because today is the day the Buddha attained liberation or discovered his liberation uh, from the mental, you know, afflictions and the mental impurities. I think Bhante asked a quite quite a broad question, right? How, what do I think about mental health with um, Buddhist practice? I do agree that nowadays it's more and more pertinent. It's more and more common for people to refer to Buddhist practice or look into Buddhist teachings uh, in order to discover some valuable ideas and insights for mental health, right? For mental health treatment or for some of the mental health problems that they might be facing. For me, one of the one of the important ideas or teachings from the Buddha that are that is very relevant uh, for for mental health is the teaching of dukkha, right? Suffering, commonly translated as suffering, right? So the the Buddha's uh, teaching on dukkha is it's a it's a broad it covers a broad spectrum of experiences in the in the human life, right? Or in the human experiences, including mental and physical suffering and pain. And therefore, I think when we look into how the Buddha analyzed the different causes of dukkha, we can we can start to diagnose and analyze our own experience and the causes of our suffering. Mm, I'll I'll pause there. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure yeah, if that's everybody a, is looking for a longer. That's certainly yeah, a good point there. to discuss. Uh, you know uh, why why this mental pain, mental suffering. Uh, arises so that, that that's what the buddha actually found out uh, with his liberation and he said that it is a mismanagement especially it is uh, because of uh, the greed that's the main thing we call it craving so craving is the main reason of many problems but uh, uh, we all have likes and dislikes and there's no problem with the likes and dislikes let's say i like this one i like this thing and i dislike let's say we don't uh, expect a snake uh, coming uh, to the room because <laughs> we all dislike that part. We don't uh, like certain uh, things happen. We don't like uh, uh, a person who is corrupted uh, to uh, you know govern a country, right? There is this uh, dislike uh, in a in a in a nice way. But the problem is, uh, people they uh, when they are mismanaged, what happens is that when they uh, develop uh, likings. Uh, to further levels, then they get up to uh, craving. I would say this is something called like covetousness. And when they develop uh, dislikings, uh, then what happens, they will take it to ill will. Now, these are issues. So that's one of the main things that we have to understand. And then the Buddha said that uh, craving is the fundamental reason for all the suffering. What kind of suffering that uh, people uh, go through on a daily basis? now? Now we can see that uh, the world is world has been uh, revolutionizing with a lot of things. Like here we uh, talk to each other on the internet uh, in twenty first century. We talk dhamma uh, on the internet at this point with couple people. More people are watching uh, in the backstage. Now uh, the thing is that uh, the more uh, the materialistic perspectives are actually growing, uh, probably for the sake of good, uh, probably for the sake of bad then uh, the more mental problems uh, are likely to arise because let's say uh, it's it's more about how many people can enjoy how many people can possess uh, you know this ownership thing that's why the buddha said yam uh, nalabati so one of the very uh, you know popular type of like 
you know very uh, general type of suffering is that people don't get what they want yam pichang so uh, they like something nalabati uh, it's a tampi uh, so uh, they don't get what they like but some people get what they like uh, the buddha, buddha said that uh, this is mainly a suffering but but the buddha didn't say that you should not like things and people it's okay but you have to have your management in that but certainly it's a suffering and he said that sankitte na panchupada nakanda dukkha in his first dhamma talk dhamma chaka pattern sutta which means in short clinging to aggregates which means uh, uh, rupa vedana sanya sankara vijnana which means for the uh, for the rupa part i would say the body vedana means uh, feelings uh, sanya means perception sankara means uh, formations vijnana means mind so when somebody clings to these five then they are suffering now it's very easy to uh, define here now whenever you attach to your body too much whenever you attach your feelings too much let's say i don't feel comfortable right? and and uh, you are so much attached you are so much clung so that you expect different things to happen but they don't happen such things don't happen you won't have the opportunity for some reasons so then the buddha says this is the problem you are clinging you are clung and then what about the perceptions so perceptions happen whenever you note uh, something for the past something for the future so you are looking at uh, these uh, two times with something with a knot let's say uh, you knot something and then uh, for the past and for the future but things don't happen the way that you perceive it and then um, sankhara means uh, you know the good karma bad karma and all that so because of these good karma bad karma we are in a sansara we are in a very uh, i would say in uh, i would say indefinite kind of a you know, uh, wandering sansaric life. And then vijnana means uh, our consciousness. So if you are clung to your consciousness also, uh, that's one of the reasons of why this suffering exists. Then somebody can argue. Then why do we then, uh, then, then we can't do anything actually at all. It's not that way, how we need to look at it. Uh, the Buddha said that uh, we need to balance out these uh, aspects in our life. Not too much, not too less. And there is our happiness. And then, uh, you know, uh, adding up to that thing, Buddha clearly uh, shared with us a kind of a standardized practice for this balancing out part. That is uh, what he called by the middle path, the noble eightfold path. So that's the clearer path to balance out this issue. Now, in that uh, noble eightfold path, we see that there are eight components that we need to practice. Uh, but uh, please keep in mind that we need to practice all components, uh, you know, simultaneously as much as we can. Now, the now the first thing where you want, where you can find out your happiness is that you need to have what you call right view, samadhi. Now, this is very important. If our view is uh, what you call uh, ignorant, if it does not uh, have any clear elements then whatever the things happen after that with that thinking with that perspective will give us a hard time let's say i view something in a in an ignorant way or a person or a phenomenon then everything else happens after that uh, with that ignorant uh, context that's why uh, the, the most important thing in this balancing out path is uh, samadhi we, we need to have this wholesome i would say right view so when you have right view at least you know that this is the right view then you can uh, distinguish uh, the bad from the good good from the bad so uh, then you are continuing in that path because you need to uh, what you call uh, uh, first practice each uh, separately and then to practice simultaneously samaditi sama sankappa sama sankappa means right uh, intention so in order for us to uh, you know, uh, continue our path with right view or uh, would say wholesome view, we need to have proper intentions, right intentions. This is very interesting for our mental health because if you spend the day with uh, so much greedy thoughts, so much, uh, I would say, uh, killing, destroying thoughts, uh, afflicting thoughts of other people, those are 
killing your mental health. Those are killing your mental well-being. So the Buddha said, you need to practice three types of uh, specific thoughts. We call them Nekkama Sankhapa. Thoughts of ren renunciation, letting go. The more you let go, the happier you are because, because people attach so much to certain things and people. But uh, although you are uh, leading a life with uh, sensual pleasures, but you can practice this uh, space of letting go. It, it doesn't harm because you, you are not too much controlling and then manipulating other people, but you understand that there is happiness with the sensual pleasures. So the first type of intentions um, uh, is that you practice uh, intentions on renunciation or letting go. Then uh, the second uh, type of intentions uh, is uh, avyapada sankhapa. Avyapada sankhapa means that you practice intentions on uh, not harming other, not killing other people. Now, how many people are there in this society who uh, are carrying thoughts to uh, destroy other folks? Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, so that's, uh, Rain, I see a question. Probably uh, I can uh, get to that point uh, somewhere in the discussion, okay? <laughs> uh, just, just spotlight the question later, or probably you can put it uh, under the chat. So now uh, the second type is, uh, you know, intentions of not killing. That means uh, saving other folks, other beings. That's the second type of uh, good intentions for mental health. And third type is intentions on, uh, you know, taking care, I would say not harming, but not, the second one is killing, but it's not harming. So when you have these types of intentions, you are really taking care of your mental health. Now, there are a lot of folks who, who, really having a hard time with these thoughts they they have they have intentions on destroying and then uh, you know possessing a lot of things and then they will want to get out of the problem the mental health problem so that's why the buddha said whenever you have all these uh, intentions you can't uh, ever expect your mental health uh, goes well and then uh, the third component in the balancing out part which is called by noble eightfold path is your speech. Speech makes up a lot. You need to speak properly. You need to speak words that are not lies. Uh, words that don't carry tales. Words that are really uh, pleasing, charming to others. Words that are not a part of gossiping or idle chat. I don't want to actually go one by one because of the time constraint. So these are the proper words that we need to practice for mental health. If you ever use this kind of word uh, on a daily basis, you will struggle a lot. You will struggle yourself. You struggle from other people, right? And then some uh, come on to the, the, the next one, which means that you need to do a certain uh, job or an activity that has no killing, no stealing, no misbehaving. It also helps us to uh, stay on to our mental health. Then Samma Ajiva. Samma Ajiva means the nature of our living. Now, whenever you do a job, you might probably not look at uh, the aspects of swindling, cheating, uh, I would say, uh, you know, manipulating other people to get some money, more money, extra money and all that. So the Buddha said that you need to be honest and really not harmful towards other people. That's, that should be the nature of your working, whatever the living that you are having for your life. That's also a good part of our mental health. Because let's say you are working in a company, you are always trying to uh, dominate others, try to control others, and you your mental health is bad. And then you are creating a bad mental health in other people too, who are working for you, working for the company. So that is connected, Sama Ajiva. Sama Vayama, that means, uh, Sama Ajiva means right uh, living. Sama Vayama means, uh, by, what do you say, uh, right effort. Now, energy is very important in Buddhism. Now, even to stay on to our mental health, we need to balance out our energy. Now, say, for instance, you might be very energetic uh, on one day, probably on uh, May 15 today because of the Vesak day. But uh, May 16 is another day. That's tomorrow. But if you run out of your patience, then that means you, you are not managing yourself very well. That means the Buddha said energy is always fluctuating. So the key to manage energy is to understand what kind of energy I need to uh, keep having on. 
everyday daily basis because when somebody says uh, something uh, different to you and then when somebody says something good to you or whatever the changes fluctuations happen uh, within and uh, beyond of you what happens is that your energy uh, is reacting responding to those uh, phenomena uh, that's why the buddha said that energy has to be managed properly the buddha said we need to use our energy in four ways under samma vayama right uh, effort we need to use energy to do good karmas which we have not done in our life we need to use good uh, energy for uh, good kar karmas good things that we don't have uh, we have but we need to develop them second one the third one is we need to use our energy to uh, put down the bad stuff that we already have we need to use our energy uh, not to let uh, non existing bad habits that we don't have at the moment to come into our life let's say i'm not you're not jealous you don't want jealous jealousy to come in into your life you to put effort for that so uh, there are four ways in this context uh, to use our energy that's how you're going to balance out your energy for mental health then samma sati that means right uh, mindfulness i would say uh, wholesome mindfulness why there is a wrong mindfulness a lot of people say mindfulness in whatever the way uh, good but why there is a wrong mindfulness the reason is that at the buddha's time people try to be mindful not to attain nibbana but just to feel happy feel good <laughs> it happens right there are a lot of ways people try to be good try to feel try to feel uh, what do you call uh, uh, find the bliss that's the proper word bliss that's it but unfortunately if you not do not try to uh, navigate uh, your mindfulness towards nibbana as uh, the buddha says the samam bonam the greatest uh, objective of buddhism then you may have a chance to uh, come back to normal uh, mental layers so if you want to find the permanent what you call uh, the mental uh, bliss that is uh, to attain nibbana so that that's why the buddha said there is right mindfulness and wrong mindfulness so this is the practice of jhanas actually first four jhanas and sama samadhi means right concentration that means we need to uh, we need to be able to concentrate our mind uh, depending on the wholesome things now you can focus uh, your mind on even unwholesome stuff if somebody can say uh, i'm listening to a song uh, my mind is focused that is not samma samadhi that is just a focusing samma samadhi means your mind gets concentrated because of a wholesome thing now when you listen to a song you have desires it's okay i mean it's just on a secular level but according to the practice uh, your mind should be concentrated on a wholesome purpose so now here you know that there are eight now these are not new to all of you but i just uh, wanted to go over one by one to show the mental health elements of these eight right i think so far you already know these uh, eight as a blanket uh, teaching but this is not a blanket teaching this is the, these eight have the elements for us to practice for mental health so this is one very big aspect to practice buddhism for our mental health second is the practice of sila samadhi panya what is sila samadhi panya now when you approach a monk or a, a professional who can really advise you they always say you need to start your mental health practice from sila then samadhi then panya why is it now you can't go to a university without uh, going to a high school right <laughs> I don't know whether somebody can, uh, you know, jump into those things uh, pretty fast. But normally you can't. In the same way, uh, in Buddhism, one has to start from sila. Sila means morality. I think Rain we already did a, did a kind of a discussion about it uh, according to uh, some of the requests before, right? I gave a couple of talks about sila here. So we start with sila. Now on uh, Vesak Pol Moon Day, a lot of people they took precepts, eight precepts. Uh, other than the eight precepts, you already take five precepts every day, like the usual five precepts. Then, whenever you keep your precepts, then 
you are able to practice your meditation properly because whenever you keep your precepts well that means you are able to concentrate faster than somebody who do not practice whenever your mind is concentrated that's the time your wisdom arises your wisdom arises because of the concentration so this is another very important facet or uh, aspect of the mental health in buddhism okay that's very uh, important uh, and uh, i wanted to uh, get others to uh, to discuss uh, i mean here we have uh, Bacon and we have we got another question also so i i try to pinpoint couple of things and then we'll go for the discussion now the third very important thing here is uh, now the mental health problems that people always uh, you know have in in today's world now if you look at the problems that many people have let's say a compulsion to eating now this is a mental health problem right uh, what do you call by that overeating uh, so I have a problem, somebody can say, I have a problem, I overeat. Then in psychology, they say uh, what you call uh, obsessive compulsive <laughs> kind of a disorder. Obsessive compulsive eating disorder. I actually, I wrote an article about it sometimes ago. Now, the thing here is that, now the Buddha says, I don't care about what food you eat. The Buddha says, the idea is, I don't care what food you eat because People live in different parts of the world. But I care about the quantity, uh, the quantity of your food that you consume. That's true, right? So we need to really eat in moderation. Now, people who have this obsessive compulsion, uh, uh, compulsive order towards food, they, they, they are actually, emo they are not eating to what they really want, but they are, they are actually, uh, eating just because they think that uh, they want to eat. There's no need for them to eat. It's kind of an emotional eating. Now, recently with the COVID uh, restrictions, uh, many people, they start uh, they started working from home. And then what happened uh, was that people were very happy. They can actually uh, reunite with their family uh, uh, for a long time uh, on a daily basis. But on the other hand, there were some uh, cons too. One of the cons was disadvantages was that they were really working uh, from home and then the fridge uh, was next to them. So they open it and eat stuff and come back work, eat, eat work. So they were actually eating a lot because the stress went their way, right? So this is one issue. That means addiction to different things. I would say the food, other things, even alcohol and other things. And the other thing I, I would like to say, I can't actually pinpoint one particular uh, mental health issue let's say a bunch of mental health issues where people are saying or kind of like opening up to a doctor or a monastic that i can't get rid of this issue i can't get i'm so addicted to that thing so this is the uh, kind of the most mostly uh, uh, said uh, statement by many when they wanted to discuss a mental health problem now the answer to this question from Buddhist point of view is that one has to have a self introspection about one's life because we have to understand we need to take care of us not because we are letting other things I would say food and other people outside from outside the bodies can actually control us so we should be able to take care of us we call it self-care self introspection and all that now, uh, it's very interesting because if if people do not care about their life in the first place, not being very selfish, but I would say. Now, there are people who are not cared about themselves at all. They only t think about others for some reason. That's also not a good thing. Then what happened? Uh, other people drain that person's energy, right? So don't be selfish. Don't be too altruistic. Uh, uh, and there are people who are not even caring themselves or others actually that's that even worse always try to take care of you and take care of others so that's the context so when you have a life like that then you care enough of your life now even 
another uh, mental health problem i would say uh, taking life committing suicide why do some people think that they want to end their life because they think that there's nothing that somebody can discuss about their life there's there's nobody can help them but actually it's not like that if they can open up that's what we need to teach uh, even our kids young people uh, anybody that there are many people the right people who can listen to you if you decide that your life is uh, finished up uh, that's not a proper decision there's always a discussion that is uh, pending uh, from other folks if you really want that to happen and the on the other hand do not ever think that your life is finished you got this life uh, with so much hardship because of a very very good karma from a past life never ever let this happen uh, with a death so the thing here is that this mental health problem called uh, committing suicide or taking life always happens when people don't care enough that means although in in common society people say this one is very selfish he or she is selfish but we need a bit of at least a bit of care when this care doesn't happen properly that is where people decide uh, everything is done finished now i'm going to go towards this path right so these three aspects now on one side eight four noble path as the path that we need to practice for mental health and then uh, in general, uh, Sila Samadhi Panya, what you, say, what you call by virtue, morality, uh, concentration and wisdom path. That's the main uh, framework of our practice. And then the, the, the contemporary mental health issues and how, and how they arise and what are their issues and why uh, do many people uh, consider them to be uh, mental, mental health issues and what's the Buddhist position about it. So these are the th three main uh, aspects that we can talk today and i think uh, i like to know what uh, we can i uh, wanted to uh, uh, share with us about probably you can share one aspect uh, in the first place all right cool cool all right thank you Bande. thank you Bande, for the very illuminating sharing and illuminating talk i found it quite helpful to look into these three aspects of buddhist practice uh, for our mental health so there is the idea of the there's the teaching on the noble eightfold path the eight components and then there is the framework of sila samadhi panya and then there is the practice of self introspection self introspection right the practice of self reflection and directing that self reflection towards the various mental health issues in our life so there are a few things that i found uh, interesting in in bande's uh, sharing so uh, in it, I, I like how bande talked about the uh, the idea of minds in the Abhidhamma. Uh, there is not just one mind, there is multiple uh, states of consciousness, right? There's multiple chittas, right? There's lobha, dosa, and so on. So there are this, there's this idea of multiple minds in Abhidhamma, and we're taught to, we're taught by the Buddha to observe yeah, the arising and passing, the arising and perishing of these uh, mental states, of these states of consciousness. I find that quite a helpful perspective. Sometimes, sometimes we feel like we are, we're, we have a conflicted uh, personality or sometimes our, the certain aspects of our character are in our intention we feel like mm, I, i'm not just one single person there are multiple uh, characteristics or multiple personalities so to speak that that go on in, in intention or in conflict within us sometimes we want to make a decision but we're not sure you know sometimes we want to make uh, different choices and so those the the idea of those experiences in our lives uh, kind of point towards this idea of multiple minds, so to speak. And we have to learn to ob observe them and learn to practice this uh, self-introspection, uh, to watch our mind more closely, uh, to see the uh, the arising, the, the conditions for the arising of mental states. I find that quite helpful in the beginning. And then Bante also spoke about uh, wrong mindfulness. I find that really, really insightful. Um, sometimes people are, sometimes many of us are, not directing mindfulness in the right way sometimes we want to be stuck right in states of bliss uh in, in in states of just just being happy without inclining the mind or directing the mind towards nibbana i find that quite helpful and uh one, one more thing bande said is about energy i like this idea of energy because sometimes sometimes our motivation or our momentum in our practice really wavers 
uh, Bante mentioned, maybe today on Wesa Day, on 15th of May, we feel a lot of motivation. We feel a lot of energy. We want to develop kindness. We want to develop generosity. We do dana and so on. And then maybe on other days, we don't feel a very high energy or a very strong momentum. I think that's quite helpful for us to examine our patterns, to examine the patterns of our lifestyle, and to examine maybe maybe the, the, the trends or the flow of our energy. It is true, some days I wake up, I realize that, Oh, I'm full of I'm full of motivation, and some days I wake up. I think mm, it, it's not. I don't even feel like getting up, right from the bed. And maybe mental health is uh, the, the struggle with mental health is sometimes this this sort of experience. If we feel the the emotions or the uh, states of um, anxiety or depression, sometimes it could feel like that. It feels like uh, there's a low state of energy in the mind. You feel like there's no motivation to. Uh, to do what you think is important to do. I think those are those are experiences that many of us could relate to. Yeah. And finally, mm, I guess one last thought uh, for now, one last thought is, is about um, the uh, idea of addiction. Bante mentioned uh, nowadays when many of us struggle with mental health, we bring up this word addiction. I, I really like this, uh, I really like this uh, sutta where where the buddha talked about uh where the buddha talked about how uh people generate conflict or how people get entangled in conflict like why do lay people fight with lay people and why do samanas and brahmanas fight with you know why do contemplative contemplatives fight with contemplatives and the buddha gave very a, a very very good reason so he said uh i think this is in the uh anguttara nikaya i believe the aramadanda sutta Right. Mm -hmm. So the Buddha said, lay people fight with lay people because of addiction to sensual pleasures, attachment to sensual pleasures. And then uh, ascetics and Brahmins, Samanas and Brahmanas, they fight with Samanas and Brahmanas because of because of addiction to views. So maybe this is uh, my thought for now, sharing about these two things. Many of us, as uh, me included, right, we, we struggle with this attachment or addiction to sensual pleasures and to views. And this gives rise to a lot of anxiety. So I'll share two experiences uh, with respect to these two, these two, uh, these two addictions, right? So on the on the side of um, addiction to sensual pleasures, sometimes there's a lot of anxiety caused in the mind when we want to pursue sensual pleasures and we cannot get them and we are not satisfied, right? Sometimes we we actually get what we wanted and then we feel disappointed, right? Uh, just now, Bande was also talking about dukkha, right? Um, not getting what we want. I love that. I love that sutta, right? How the Buddha defined dukkha. Not getting what we want is dukkha. And getting what we don't wish for is, is dukkha, right? So that, there's that. There's the anxiety um, inherent uh, in this pursuit I, I of sensual pleasure. You actually. Even getting what we want is also end up sometime with dukkha. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes, you're not right. Not but on the surface level. Yeah. yeah there, there, right. there are times when I get what I want and then I feel kind of... I, I wonder, like, is, is that it? Like, is that all? I, I feel like a, a kind of emptiness or a kind of disappointment, you know, like I realized like, hmm, maybe there's something more to this. Maybe it's not really what I expected it to be. You know, that kind of, that kind of, mit, uh, that kind of uh, mismatch in expectations sometimes leads me to wonder, is getting what I want really, really the, the key to happiness? Yeah, sometimes I, I get that as well. I mean, that's a really good point. So that's um, uh, addiction to sensual pleasures. And for addiction to views, we, we sometimes get caught up in um, our own perspective without being able to see the bigger picture, especially in terms of like decision making, in terms of uh, pursuing our life goals, or in terms of discussing ideas and, and points of view with our, our friends, our colleagues, and so on. In, in times of decision making it can sometimes gets very it can sometimes get very uh, stressful or very depressing because of this addiction to views and the difficulty to break break free of that limiting uh, or that limited uh, perspective so that's that's also a struggle that i i sometimes experience so perhaps maybe rain or bante if uh, you have any comments on uh, on, yeah, on I these think, points that i've raised thank yeah. you Ken. Um, i i think another interesting point uh, in that sutta where the lay people, uh, they are addicted to sensual pleasures. That's why they are actually struggling. And the monastics, they are actually uh, struggling because they are addicted to the views. I think 
even the sensual pleasures are views in a certain way. For example, in one, uh, another Sutta Buddha says, Sankappa Ragu Purisasa Kamo. So the karma, I would say desire, is a conceptualization. I like this person because I think this is my uh, <laughs> favorite oh, thing. I like this particular brand of probably kind of an item because this is my because that favorite thing comes from a view. Now my, my ideal type. Ideal type, right? So it's a view. Now, although people like normal folks don't think that it's the view, they think they say this is oh my desire, my raga, my loba. But actually, everything happens from a view. That's why the Buddha said. The first thing that one has to practice for mental health is samaditi, wholesome view. And if you take a look at of the modern day uh, politics, it's all views. I like the left. I like the right. I like the conservative party. I like this and that. They all exactly. And and that, exactly. that leads them to violence too. Yeah? To violence. And and when other people don't respect what the other people people uh, hold uh, true. Uh, then there are certain repercussions happening uh, by you know challenging and all that threatening i think the the biggest problem to our mental health is not understanding the views properly <laughs> i mean so it's a very good point that you brought up actually i already brought up with the samadhi part so i think if we really take care of our view now for example if you are somebody who is struggling at home in your school uh, at your workplace, outside, even on the road, when you are driving, you always need to uh, think about your attitude. These attitudes come from your views, your thoughts, attitudes. Now, uh, unless you look at a certain, uh, you know, uh, to a certain way of your views, you won't be able to feel happy. Now, the moment you can change your views uh, towards the wholesome side, I would say, I'm not having any views to uh, destroy somebody, take other people's stuff and all that. You feel you are so comfortable and and, and then you are making less uh, loba, uh, less greed. You are making less uh, hatred. You are making less ignorance. That's a very, I think this is all, this is always an abstract kind of teaching. That's why we want to be very tech, kind of a technical to people. So when we want to be technical to people about this teaching, the view thing is that, folks, you need to think about your perspectives. Let's say this is the word that many people use, my perspective, not view. So view is what we see as the consistency of a perspective. So when you think that you are struggling mentally, that probably, mostly, I guess, uh, be from a, a perspective issue. If you can uh, find out whether your perspective has a lot of greed, a lot of hatred, and then these ignorant things, then you you may have a better chance of uh, you know uh, changing that perspective, probably transforming. This is something that I really like. Somebody told me from a different religion. Uh, this uh, lady told me I, the reason why I like Buddhism is Buddhism is the only teaching that teaches the transformation. Now, I come from a different religious background and I yes. can transform, not, uh, you know, uh, belittling other religions. Even she said that I still respect uh, my roots. But mm. in Buddhism, we see the transformation. Transformation is always possible for everybody. That's beautiful. Even who, even who did a very bad thing today, he or she also has a, an opportunity tomorrow. In, in other uh, teachings, we don't see it. If you do a bad thing, you are actually uh, distinct to be like this. <laughs> There's no chance, right? We are not uh, encouraging violence or bad karma for everybody. Uh, we are saying that Buddhism is a place for everybody. Now, it's an interesting thing to talk today because this is the, the biggest day uh, in Buddhism, the Sakpul Mupoidi. So uh, the thing is that uh, if you understand that if you, uh, you have a perspective change pending, then you can work towards that. Let's say you are somebody at home, you have a uh, communication trouble with your spouse. Uh, the spouse uh, always wants to take the last word. Uh, 
So just imagine this situation and just think about how to overcome. Not that, not that you want to raise your voice back again, right? That's not the solution here. And think about why she is like this. How can I, uh, how can I stop this in a very friendly, smart manner? Then you change your perspective and then find the solution. Not that you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna actually do, uh, uh, you know, uh, tit for tat. So that's how this uh, view uh, can be uh, changed uh, towards uh, wholesome reasons. And so I, I take it uh, in a perspective change way. That's a very good way of uh, finding a mental health. Rain, you want to add anything? Uh, probably yes. you can spotlight the question, Rain, before that. If I can answer the question and then you can talk. Oh. What was the question okay. here? Uh, hand kneeling. More youth are suffering from mental health. Uh, some are due to craving, but there are many are due to unable to cope with academic requirements. How do we advise youth on this? Now, the thing is, do, do youth understand this word called craving? I don't think yes. <laughs> they don't take it. What is craving? Huh? Now, even like in our normal society, people like young young uh, teenagers, they won't understand this craving. I think if we teach them that there's too many needs, uh, but even though uh, they come to a point to understand the too many needs, but because they are in a very constant uh, competition for letter grades, uh, for jobs, they won't be able to understand it. So I think the best thing that we can uh, teach them is that you need to find yourself not to compete with others, but just to uh, do uh, the best that you can. But do not compare with other folks, right? If you compare with other folks and if you try to write, uh, sit for an exam or look for letter grades, uh, you never know where you are heading to. You all, you all have innate uh, skills, abilities. Uh, make use of them uh, and don't be influenced badly from other people then you know what you're going to do. And all at the same time, don't ever crave for these unnecessary things. Have a balance. Uh, then you will be able to find your mental health, physical health, and also your uh, school stuff. Then you are able to find the balance. Ren, you want to add anything? Yes, so uh, I, uh, I hope uh, the, in the background you can hear some chanting. Because I'm in the temple. That's okay. Uh, so yeah. it's a bit, yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, actually, I myself, uh, I have been diagnosed with uh, attention deficit disorder, which is a disorder where I basically cannot focus on things uh, that well. So I also be prescribed medicine for that. But at the same time, uh, I find one practice that helps a lot from Buddhism is meditation, mindfulness meditation. It can actually help me focus quite a lot. Uh, so when I when I do anything, if I just meditate on that thing that I'm doing, not necessarily uh, the breath or the mind, but even like when I'm doing my school work, my university work, or when I'm uh, even now on this call, I'm medi meditating on the words that Bhante said. So uh, that is an example of how I can use Buddhism to benefit so my mental health. Rain is a living example to our discussion. Huh? <laughs> anyway, yeah. and I, and I, yes, like, yes. I like the meditation part because we could not highlight a little bit more now a lot of people they uh, complain about the time of the meditation now time in the sense of the length and the uh, period I would say the, the time of the day now Too I long. would encourage yeah. yeah I would encourage the morning time uh, I mean as a regular meditation and then uh, aim for uh, some short time. We, we say it kind of a sacred pose in Western uh, vocabulary. That means you don't need to meditate too long because I mean, you will get in there one day, but you're, I think everybody should need this practice at least five minutes a day. So, uh, you know, uh, once you wake up after kind of a wash, you take five minutes every day. So that will help you to, uh, you know, uh, spend the day with very good thoughts otherwise the previous night's problems will come to you and the issues will come to you. they will take over your mind 
right? So as uh, Rain said in, in your own uh, experience, I think a short meditation, not, 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 you don't need to be serious meditations right away because I think the idea uh, with many meditators is that I want to go for a very serious meditation. I want to attain jhana in a couple of months. Uh, it might be some people's idea, it's okay for them. But I think for general folks, many of many of uh, the audience here, what they want is a short meditation. That's my understanding, kind of a sacred pose. That means you, you do a short meditation every day, at least five minutes. If you can't do every day, at least uh, once in two days. Uh, and then do a practice like breath meditation. Observe your breath. Don't try to uh, take breaths uh, by force. Just watch how your breaths happen. And then you are uh, trying to be in the moment without being judgmental. Now, here's the problem. Why a lot of people having a lot of mental problems? They judge every second. <laughs> what is this? Okay, I have this subject to knowledge about this particular thing. Ah. Flowers, ah, I see these flowers yesterday. Ah, these are different than that, those flowers. Why can't we have this objective thinking sometimes, right? So for the perspective change, I think this objective thinking is also very necessary. And then a meditation, uh, like a daily meditation. Uh, Waking, you wanted to summarize a little bit something more and then we can uh, do the transfer of some minutes after. Sure, yeah. I'll add a few more thoughts and then I'll hand it over to Rain and to Bande to yeah. to, uh, to to close it. Yeah, uh, I really like this idea of judging every second. That's so true. Sometimes like when I'm in, in my meditation, I, I just I just have, have this, um, one of my mentors in, in meditation, one of my teachers in meditation, he says this is the fault-finding mind, right? Being so judgmental. Sometimes when I'm in meditation, I really judge every thought and every uh, feeling. Like, I should not be thinking this, you know, I should not be feeling this. And, and there's this idea that I, I, need to, I need to really somehow get myself to a particular state or get myself to you know, act in a particular way in that moment. So that's so true. I think, I think we need to learn to see this and, and sort of... You know, relax a little bit more in terms of letting our mind, letting our mind flow a little bit more, uh, more gently. I would say that's really helpful, at least in my own uh, meditation practice. Uh, Rain mentioned about um, mindfulness meditation. I'm really, really glad that it has helped you, Rain. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. I hope that more and more of us could also, you know, um, enjoy the benefits of meditation. And um, a few more things I could say. Um, number one is um, it's really beautiful, Bante. Um, how uh, you've heard this um, sharing from from a from a Buddhist, right? Or from a I don't know from a practitioner. How the 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 unique thing or the the core of the Buddhist practice is this transformation. I think that's really beautiful. It is possible uh, to change our mind. I think that's really helpful. And one final thing I would add is uh, understanding this view as perspective is also really helpful. This word perspective, how we look at the world, right? How we understand the world, our perspective of reality. That's really helpful. Uh, when Bande said, um, uh, when Bande was answering the question on, you know, academic requirements and stress. Yeah, sometimes we have this tendency to compare ourselves with others. This is also a kind of perspective, like uh, like what Bande was saying, right? This uh, thoughts of self, this perspective of self. I want to, uh, I want to, uh, be centered on the self. I want myself to be to be um, recognized or to be acknowledged, right? So this is also a kind of perspective that we sometimes get caught up with. Yeah. So uh, so Bante also mentioned about uh, sensual pleasures and how sensual pleasures also stem from a kind of view or a kind of perspective. That's really really insightful. I was thinking about it as Bante was was sharing it. Yeah. It actually it's actually very true. Sometimes we have this ideal image, you know, this ideal picture of what we want in life it, it has to go in this way life have to happen life has to happen in this way and we have this ideal type ideal image of uh, people or things we want and yeah that that kind of that kind of view or perspective give rise to this um addiction to essential pleasures that's really really so true so yeah anyway um i think uh, yeah I'll, I'll, we're running out of time i just want to say uh, these are really helpful um helpful sharing I, i've learned so much today from rain and from bante uh, i've enjoyed the conversation i really hope that uh, I really hope that, yeah, tribes, maybe you guys could, Rain, uh, tribes could do more of these. We could have more more youths, uh, more uh, participants, more practitioners join in the conversation and also yeah. have a dialogue with Bante, ask the Bante more questions. Perhaps we could consider that. I, th I thought it was really enjoyable and insightful. Thank you so much, Bante, and thank you so much, Rain, for the opportunity.
Thank Mahadir you, Vikin. I think uh, this is why uh, I uh, talked to Rain about uh, having somebody uh, on stage with us, because uh, just giving a talk is always possible. But uh, like when somebody is with us on site, uh, and then uh, discussing and sharing uh, the same dhamma, uh, and then especially uh, on a certain focus, uh, will really, uh, you know, mind blowing, and then. Uh, uh, you know, uh, make more insights. So thank you, uh, Vikin, and you are com complimentary uh, and then complimenting <laughs> uh, the, the, lay the lay person's perspective and then uh, even brain. So we'll do the transfer of some merits. Uh, brain, you want to add anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to actually uh, go to the transfer. Uh, yes, I do want to add uh, something. So there's a comment from uh, Hani Dior. Uh, she thanks uh, Bhante. She also thanks us for our example. You know the spotlight. She also, uh, yes, uh, she thanks uh, Bhante oh. and she thanks uh, us. And she also mentions that uh, she Thank wishes you, meditation practice is uh, taught in uni and school. So actually, uh, it is being taught in some universities. Uh, for example, uh, in my university, Monash University in Malaysia, uh, we used to have a meditation program for a while organized by Monash Police Society, but uh, after one week, unfortunately, there was a lockdown, so we couldn't continue with the meditation program. So we we had to stop yeah, due to the lockdown, and we, That's a we good haven't yeah. Yeah, we haven't continued since. Uh, in Google, the company uh, Google, there's also a uh, meditation rooms, and they also teach meditation at work as well. So yes, I agree with the suggestion. For me, meditation benefits me a lot. Uh, I think we should all practice some form of meditation. Even when we are driving, focusing on the road, just completely focusing on the road. Don't listen to any music at all. That itself is a form of meditation, I would say. It's not Buddhist meditation, but it's a form of meditation. Meditation focusing on something. Mindfulness, mindfulness, yeah. Yeah, mindfulness, yeah, that's the correct word. Yeah. Rain, you wanted to say why you are with a mask? Because people might uh, not know why you're wearing oh. a mask. You, you're in the temple. Oh, yes. yes <laughs> yeah, I'm in the, the temple, temple. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I have a mask on. So you need to yeah, wear mask, the mask. Uh, mask is uh, mandatory indoors. It's optional outdoors. But the uh, temple is indoors. So, yeah. 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 In Malaysia, uh, Rain, at the you, moment, are you, that's are you the... from the same area? Are you from, uh, are you from the same area? I'm, the I'm from... Area? I'm from Putra Heights, uh, Subang Jaya. So it's actually okay. quite near to tribes to uh, Tiratana uh, Temple. Yeah, it's about okay. maybe ten to fifteen wow. minutes of uh, ten to so, fifteen minutes drive away. So this yeah. temple is in Puchong, right? The, the yes, in Puchong, exactly. Puchong. That's right. That's oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I've okay, been there great. once. I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So we'll then do the transfer of some merits now, and then we will uh, wind this up. So, uh, Dhamma folks, uh, now we're going to uh, transfer all the good karmas to de departed people who passed away the name of all of us. Here we have uh, Waken, Rain, and I know that uh, there's Chief Reverend, other monks and devotees uh, who join probably uh, online. May all the good karmas be transferred to all the departed people who passed away in the name of all of them in this life or in past lives. Uh, may they be able to uh, receive all these good karmas. Suppose if they are reborn in a bad state of life, may they be able to switch to a good life by uh, enjoying all these good karmas. If they were already reborn in a better place, then may they uh, be able to utilize all these good karmas to improve their life so that you, they can listen to Dhamma and then finally attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Idam me nyati nang hu tu sukita hun tu nyate yo. Idam me nyati nang hu tu sukita hun tu nyate yo. Idam me nyati nang hu tu sukita hun tu nyate yo. May all the good karmas be shared by all the devas, nagas, and all the mayadivas. May they bless uh, the chief reverend and other monks, and in particular today, uh, waking and your family, your parents and everybody, and then uh, Rain's family, parents, siblings, everybody, and all the devotees and all the others who are uh, joining uh, online today. May the Devas, Nagas, Brahmas protect and bless all of you for good health, quality of your life, and all the prosperity. Uh, may the Devas and Nagas and Mahidikas also 
be well and happy and finally attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 ittavata cha ammehi sambatan punya sampadan sabbe deva anumodan ku sabba sampatti sindhya ittavata cha ammehi sambatan punya sampadan sabbe bhuta anumodan ku sabba sampatti sindhya ittavata cha ammehi sambatan punya sampadan sabbe satta anumodan ku sabba sampatti sindhya aka satta cha bummatta deva naga mahindika Punyantang anumu ditwa chirang rakhang pulu kasasanang. Aka satha chibumata diva naga mahindika. Punyantang anumu ditwa chirang rakhang tudi sanang. Aka satha chibumata diva naga mahindika. Punyantang anumu ditwa chirang rakhang tumang paranti. Finally, may all the good karmas we've been accumulating uh, to this point be helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. By power of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, may all our sufferings go away. By the power of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, may all our sicknesses go away. By the power of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, may all our fears go away. And then finally, I'm going to bless you with a couple more stanzas. Please receive the blessings. And I want to wish you one more time. Happy Vesak Day 2022. Abhivadana silis nichang vadha pachayino Chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayuvannu sukham balang Ayura rogya sampatti sangha sampatti mevach Atu nibbana sampatti Iminati Samidnjati Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Wiccan, uh, for being here and then doing, for providing, facilitating. Thank you. Sadhu Thank you, Sadhu, Sadhu. Sadhu Sadhu. So much. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day. Happy Vesa, everyone. Sadhu Happy Sadhu. Vesa. I mean, there's one comment uh, from from Hani Liao. I'm not sure if you want to highlight that uh, or bring that up. I was active in PTA. Yeah, that one. Yeah, it's true. Uh, sometimes we want to do more for our youth, and that's why that's why we have youth societies. Uh, Tiratana Youth Buddhist Section is one of the youth groups to engage the youth to uh, you know to share the teachings of the Dhamma. Yes, Happy Vesa Day! Wow, many good comments. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Beautiful. Awesome, Rain. Thanks for the opportunity, yeah, Rain. Uh, I hope, I hope right. uh, you, got, you guys at the temple are having a good celebration. Yeah. All right. Happy Visa. Happy Visa. Sadhu. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, we will be having, uh, everyone, we will be having a uh, puja at 8 30 p.m. from Tiratana Vihara Clang, from our Clang branch. Uh, it's time to change the logo back to our decide to our parent organization so the youth takeover of the live stream is uh, finished uh, we'll head over to our kind of vihara uh, obviously i won't be driving all the way there it's in 15 minutes we have puja at 8 30 pm so uh, uh in the meantime uh, we will be playing some videos we'll be sharing some videos uh. yeah uh, we'll be sharing a few videos uh, 